In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace your track bar ball joint. It's located right here, bolts up to the front differential. Let's get started. Use a 24 millimeter socket, remove this nut. Put it back a few threads to hold the track bar after you hammer it to take it off so it doesn't fall down. And now take a hammer, hammer right here, and it should pop the track bar right off of the ball joint. There we go. Finish removing the nut. Pull this down and off. At this point, you can either tie it out of the way or to get this even more out of our way, let me show you a trick. Follow the track bar to the other end and you'll see a 30 millimeter nut and a 30 millimeter bolt. Loosen this up. Now to press this ball joint out of here, if you try and press on the stud, it's most likely going to go crooked sideways. It's not going to work. So what I suggest is removing this boot, cutting the stud as flush as possible to the base. That's what I'm going to do. Maybe you have a different method, but this is the way that I'm going to go about this. I'm gonna grab a pry bar so I can get it off. Remove some of this grease here. Now I want to get rid of some of this debris that's up here so that my ball joint press cup can sit flush, nice and uh, solid on here. I don't want it slipping or going sideways. Now I have this receiving cup I'm going to install right up here. Be careful of this. You don't want to damage the, uh, the vacuum hose. And with this up here, let's grab the ball joint press. Try to set your ball joint press as uh, centered as possible. Grab whatever socket your ball joint press requires, and let's go ahead and press this ball joint out. Get this out of here. There it is. If you don't have a ball joint press, you could probably use a hammer, hammer it out of here, but you'll still need something to put over it to install it because when we install it, we have to press on this outer lip. You can't just hammer right in the middle, that'll completely destroy the ball joint, and it's no good anymore. So you still need some sort of adapter to press on here, and typically you would get a ball joint press for that. On this new ball joint, I have a grease fitting that I can install, and I actually will install it before I press the ball joint in, because I don't want any debris making its way inside of the ball joint. So get this fitting started and let's tighten it up. Use your eight millimeter socket and make it nice and snug. It doesn't have to be bottomed out as long as it's snug. For now let's set up the new ball joint. I'm gonna slide it down, make sure the mounting hole is clean. Mine is, so I don't have to worry about it. And I have this cup that sits on top and although it doesn't have a hole here, the fitting, the grease fitting does not touch. It does not make contact, I checked. So it is safe for me to press the cup onto the top of it. I know you can't quite see it, but it's there. And then on the bottom, I have this receiving tube. It even has a window in it, so you can see what's happening. But it's deep enough for the ball joint to go into it without the stud hitting the bottom. And if it isn't, then we will adjust as needed. For now, let's get this situated. Let's put the snap ring on to lock in this ball joint. When you do this, you want to make sure that it's seated all the way around. I'm actually going to grab it again and expand it just a little bit, try to twist it to ensure that it is seated, which it is. I double checked. I can see all the way around. Perfect. Let's move along. Now we can reinstall the track bar. Now on this end, grab the track bar. Let's move the 
ball joint this way. And, oops, moved it too far. Okay. Put this on. All right, make sure that's nicely seated. It is. This is now a 27 millimeter socket. Tighten this nut up. Let's torque it down. The torque for this nut is 184 foot pounds. Okay, and now we have to line up the cotter pin slot. Ooh, actually that lines up perfectly. So if yours doesn't, you want to keep tightening, unfortunately. Never loosen a castle nut to get the slot to line up, but ours lines up perfectly. So that is great, good news. Let's put the cotter pin in. Bend it over to lock it in. Now, because I'm on a lift, I have to raise the whole front differential up so I can uh, put the bushing on the track bar at somewhat close to ride height so that I can torque it properly. Otherwise, you'll prematurely wear it and that would not be a good thing because then you have to replace it again. So I'm only raising this side up because as I raise this side, it's gonna push the track bar up and therefore, naturally, the bushing will sit at a better angle. However, if you're on the ground, you just tighten it up while it's on the ground. Let's put the nut on here, and the torque for this bolt is 406 foot-pounds. So, what I'm going to do is just use my air gun and go until it stops because there's no way I can torque that to 406 foot-pounds. I don't even have a torque wrench that goes that high. I'd say that's tight. And now we can lower the whole front end. Because this is a greasable ball joint, I'm going to add some grease to it. Put your grease gun on the fitting, add some until you can see the boot expand. Okay, the boot's starting to expand. Probably going to do one more. There we go, right there. That's perfect. Wipe off any excess grease that might be on here just so it doesn't collect any debris. And uh, now you want to remember to come back and do this periodically. I recommend every oil change. Add some grease to this, maybe every other oil change, but definitely every once in a while come back and check it because the greasable ones are not 100% sealed. So grease eventually will leak out and you need to add more. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.